Hi guys, my name is Cash and welcome back to Cashed Out Cars. This is another episode of Too Broke, Too Boosted, my budget turbo Miata build. And in today's video, we're gonna be plumbing the oil lines for the turbo to make sure that it stays lubricated, cool, and hopefully lives a long, healthy life. So let's get into it. So here you can see a bunch of things that I have to plumb in the oil line for the turbo. Now, as you can see, there's a lot here and I'm not gonna be using everything. Um, some of the stuff is from the eBay turbo that I got. It actually came with an oil feed and this adapter here. And the rest of the stuff is from a T3 oil feed kit that I also got on eBay. But unfortunately, that wasn't quite complete either and I still needed to buy other stuff. So I'm gonna give you the total that I spent so far on the oil line stuff and also the total that I've spent overall at the end of this video but I could do it cheaper than I did here because I ended up with a lot of extra stuff but anyway let's start out with the oil feed I'm gonna start by putting this adapter onto the turbo using an oil feed line and also using this adapter here to thread right into the block and then we'll be in good shape Here's the top of the turbo, this goes on there, and this feels like an extremely cheap gasket that might leak, but since it came with the kit, I'm gonna use it, and if it leaks, I'll get a better one or make a better one. Then we'll put that adapter on there and tighten it down with this hardware. And now that we've got that adapter on, I'm starting to really notice the limitations of these eBay oil feed line kits. Now, like I said, they're not complete and I expected to need to buy more stuff, but this is the only 90 degree fitting that came in the kit. And obviously you need your oil feed straight up on your turbo so you don't damage anything. And that means that this oil line is going to come off just like that and it's going to stick up super high. For now, since I don't have the right fitting, I'm just going to go ahead and get everything installed as is because I'm going to be running this thing with no hood to start. But I will have another video down the road of cleaning up to Broke to Boosted, which is going to be making sure that my hood will be able to close and also, well, adjusting this oil line so that the hood will close. So anyway, this feeds right on here. This is the AN fitting, so you just need to tighten it down and it'll seal on itself nicely. And then the next thing we need to do is hook this up to the engine to get oil. Now on these 1.6s, it's really nice. There's a bolt down there that's a little bit hard to see, but on a 1.6, it's the bolt that's lower down and to the back. I'll see if I could get a nice shot of it there. So it's that lower one that's towards the back of the engine. And that is a high pressure oil feed that's already basically built into one of these 1.6 engines. If you have a 1.8, you could tap into your oil pressure sensor or there are a couple other locations that people use, but I'm gonna go ahead and use that take that out, get my fitting in there, and then hook up this line. So here's the fitting that's gonna be going in there, and there's the little bolt that I took out. Now you wanna be extra careful when you're doing this to not get any dirt or debris in that fitting or in the hole in the block. So be extra careful, you don't want dirt in your oil, that could screw stuff up. And then I went ahead and screwed in that oil line down there into that fitting I installed, and I also attached this upper fitting here. Now, I just snug those down a decent amount. These are pipe threads and AN fittings, so you don't wanna use Teflon tape on them. You just wanna snug them down and they'll seal. And this is what we're working with. So, like I said, I think this looks really stupid without the 90 degree on there. This comes up way too high and I really don't like it but it's what this kit came with and I don't really wanna go get another fitting right now. So this is what I'm gonna run until I get another one. All right, so now our oil feed is all hooked up and we could work on the oil drain. So I'm at the back of my car with my miscellaneous parts that came in the couple of oil feed and drain kits here. And we have the drain that comes directly off of the turbo, which I'm going to use this adapter on, which is very similar to the AN adapter that I have screwed in there which has an AN fitting on one side and a pipe thread on the other. The pipe thread goes right into that adapter and then this goes right into an AN fitting. One thing to note is I got this at a hardware store and the angle is slightly different than the actual AN fitting. So this isn't really a great thing to do and you wanna use the correct AN fitting. But since that's all I could find and I wanted to get my car up and running, I'm gonna assemble it with this and uh, since this is the drain and it's gonna be draining downwards, I don't think it should leak from here, but you wanna use the proper fitting. Anyway, after that, you had this other part of the AN fitting, which you thread onto your drain hose there, and then later you thread it onto there to make that seal up really nicely. Then it's the same thing at the other end here, and I'm just gonna unscrew this real quick. 
And then you could see we have this other AN fitting, which is going to screw into that fitting right there, which is going to go straight into our oil pan, which we're gonna have to tap. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this stuff ready, and then we can move along to start to get this onto the turbo, tap our oil pan, and then get everything in place. Now I've got that fitting threaded into the adapter for the turbo, and I did put some thread sealant on there. It's made for this kind of stuff, and I prefer to use that over something like Teflon tape because you're not gonna risk losing the sealant into your oil, whereas Teflon tape could come apart and end up in your oil. And this basically just stays on the outside there and helps seal it up. So I much prefer that over Teflon tape for this application. Next up, we could go ahead and get this fitting onto this hose. As you can see, I already started this and have this pretty much bottomed out. To get this thing on there, it's a left-handed thread, so you need to crank it the opposite way that you think you do, turn it onto your hose, and then you could go ahead and get the next part on. So this threads into there, that taper on the fitting forces the hose outwards and creates a really good seal. So I'm gonna get this thing sealed up and then show you the final result. All right, that fitting's all on there and ready to be attached to here. Now I was gonna do that and get the fitting on this other side, but this oil line is actually a little bit long for my car. So I'm gonna go ahead and rough fit this over there on the turbo on my car and see how long this oil line's gonna be. And then I'm going to go ahead and tap the oil pan and put this fitting in and then cut this line down and get the fitting on the other side and finalize everything. All right, so now we are at possibly the scariest part of turboing a Miata. And honestly, I didn't think it was that scary until I watched all the videos telling me how scary other people thought it was. And now it's time to drill the oil pan. So the reason this is scary is you need to drill into your oil pan with a pretty big bit to tap it for a fitting. And when you do that, the oil pickup is basically right behind where you need to drill. And if you go too far, you run into that, need to pull the pan, buy a new pickup, and it's a bad time. But anyway, my dad's coming down to help me with this thing. So I have another set of experienced eyes on this to make sure I don't screw it up. And we're going to go for it. So the first thing we need to do is center punch where we want to drill with this hammer and pump. So this is right where this fitting is going to go. It is hard to clear that steering rack there and I did zip tie up my AC lines to give me some extra room there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark where I need to center punch and center punch it. As you could see, all of those shavings are collected on the end of the bit there. All right, so I used that long center drill there and now we're just barely through with a really small hole and now we're ready to step up to the large bit. So I'm using a lot of grease on these bits to try to catch all those shavings and you wanna go in just a little bit, pull the thing back out and um, take the shavings off and just repeat that process over and over until you're all the way through. You'll notice that I didn't have a stop on that center drill because it's easy to control, but with the full size drill bit, you want to have a stop on there so you don't go in and hit your oil pickup. We're still not through that center punched uh, hole yet, so I'm not gonna continuously grease this until I'm through that because right now, hardly any chips could get in, so I'm gonna keep going, and once I start to break through, then I'm gonna repeatedly grease this. All right, final stretch. This is gonna be really light pressure and just barely breaking through because even though we have that stop on there, we don't really wanna have to rely on it, so just be careful. All right, guys, we are in. That is a really nice hole in the oil pan there, and it went pretty smoothly. Now I'm gonna use some Q-tips with grease to get out all the chips from the inside, or as many as I could, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tap it. All right, now you need to go ahead and tap that with the corresponding tap that you used for the drill and for your fitting. This is pretty much the same process if you've tapped anything in your life. So if you've done it before, you'll know what to do. If not, watch some videos first and then you'll be in good shape. Also use a lot of grease during this process to catch all of those chips because once again, you don't want them going into the pan. 
All right, guys, that fitting is in there. One thing to note is there's not a ton of clearance to this AC stuff up there to get the fitting on. Uh, well, to get the hose fittings onto this fitting that goes into the pan, but it does just barely clear, so be careful of that too when you're choosing where you want that fitting. So I'm pretty happy with this. Tomorrow I'm going to clean out that oil pan, drain the oil, and then um, finish up this install. All right, it's the next morning. That looks really good now that I could actually see it well. Um, I'm happy with how that went and that fitting threads in pretty nicely there. The next thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is drain the oil and then flush out the pan. All right, so slight change of plans. I sat there and I kept putting grease on my finger on a glove and reaching into that hole and trying to get out all of those chips. And I got it to the point where I really can't feel any more shavings in there. And I think that I got most of them out. So I'm actually gonna skip flushing out the pan. A lot of people flush out the pan with mineral spirits, but I don't have a lot of mineral spirits here. And also I think I did a really good job getting the chips out with my finger. Also, I just put a brand new oil filter on here and there is the screen on the oil pickup. So any chips really should get stuck in that and not go up into the engine. If you're overly worried about it, you absolutely can flush out the oil pan with mineral spirits. But like I said, I'm gonna skip that on my build. All right, so that thing is on there. Once again, I use this high temperature thread sealant. A lot of people use JB Weld for this, but I didn't have any JB Weld. And once again, I just wanted to get this thing done. And this high temperature thread sealer should do the trick. Once again, don't use Teflon tape because that can melt and end up clogging up your oil system. So use something like this or JB Weld. Now I'm working on getting the approximate position of this thing. So I have this thing mostly screwed on. I am gonna have to use the straight fitting down here. I wanted to use the bent one at the bottom, but the straight one is really the only one that fits. And also I cut it pretty close with that AC compressor stuff. But anyway, that looks good. Now I'm gonna go up top and take a look at where I wanna trim this thing. So obviously this goes right to the bottom of that turbine housing right there. So it looks like I could take a couple of inches off, maybe like, uh, maybe like four inches or so. That'll give me a little bit of wiggle room with this. So now I've got this fitting on the turbo and I marked where I need to cut this braided line in order to make this thing fit. And honestly, it's gonna work pretty good having this angle up here cause it kicks the line forward, which gives me some clearance uh, around the rest of the stuff down here that I want to avoid. All right, so now that's cut and this end of the fitting is screwed on. Once again, we need to screw that on. And this time I'm gonna use just a tiny bit of silicone on there to help the thing squeeze on there nicely. And then I'll just turn that on to there just like the other fitting and we'll be in good shape to get this thing installed on the car. Now that line is all hooked up. I just tightened down the top and bottom fitting, which means our oil lines are all set here. So the next video is going to be making a custom dump pipe for this thing. To start out, I am gonna make a hood dump because it's the easiest option and I think it'll be pretty fun. So like this video if you're excited for that. Comment down below if you have any questions about what you've seen so far. If you want to see the next episode of Too Broke, Too Boosted right now, you could head over to my Patreon page and see it live. If not, you have to wait a little bit longer to see it on YouTube. But this is super awesome. We're getting super close to the first start and I am so excited. So like I said, like this video if you liked it, subscribe for more, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.